In this lecture, I want to explain about the positive and negative energy of vacuum in relation to the symmetry of time. But prior to this lecture, I want to talk a little bit about quantum mechanics. We know that in the time independence Schrodinger equation, relativity was neglected by quantum mechanics. But when quantum mechanics must explain the smooth structure of spectral line, relativity is applied in Dirac relativistic quantum mechanics to explain this phenomenon. And we recognize that electron has the spin of plus minus one half. But then, when quantum mechanics must explain the quantum entanglement phenomenon, relativity is neglected once more by quantum mechanics. Where is the position of quantum mechanics? If relativity is neglected in the case of quantum entanglement phenomenon, by conclusion of communication faster than the speed of light, how about Dirac relativistic quantum mechanics, which is still used in quantum mechanics until now? So I wanted to say that you don't yet understand quantum mechanics if you don't yet realize inconsistency of quantum mechanics. But what I mean is about interpretation of quantum mechanics instead of quantum mechanics itself. Quantum mechanics is the great theory we ever had. And I work for quantum mechanics so that this theory can be a complete description of reality. As we have seen in lecture 7 that there is no distance between two entangled particles because of overlapping of positions which are defined by the radius vector and the time vector. This overlapping of position is like interception of position at latitude and longitude. So if the time vector is not recognized in quantum mechanics as a fundamental factor in describing reality, the distance between two entangled particles will become an illusion for quantum mechanics. I emphasize once again, there is no distance between two entangled particles because of overlapping of position which are defined by the radius vector and the time vector. This overlapping of position is like interception of position at latitude and longitude. Thus, if the time factor is not recognized in quantum mechanics as a fundamental factor in describing reality, so the distance between two entangled particles will become an illusion for quantum mechanics. How can quantum mechanics be a reliable theory to describe reality? In fact, its mathematical construction is unable to explain why something in space looks like has a distance. Evidently, it has no distance. Or why something in space looks like has a time. Evidently, it has no time. At this point, I have to say that the time factor must be involved in mathematical structure, construction of quantum mechanics so that this theory can be a complete description of reality and it doesn't make any more a confusing conclusion such as 
communication faster than the speed of light. As I have emphasized in lecture one that the quantum effect is not the common effect of physics. It is the relativity effect. So the quantum effect must be explained based on relativity point of view. Interaction in the space-time system is non-local interaction. That is interaction across the real space and the imaginary space where the rule of Einstein clock as a universal clock cannot be replaced by the ordinary clock which is just a local clock. That's why we conclude that the time independent scrolling equation is not valid to describe the position of particle in the space-time system. This because the rule of the observer with his ordinary clock or the local clock is just the local rule, so observation of the observer cannot make the collapse of universal wave function. In this situation, we have to view Einstein clock as the measurement device and the observer at once in performing the measurement of coordinate or determining the position of particle. Without intervention of the observer, the way of work of Einstein clock set up the dynamic of the collapse of universal wave function. So, nothing can make the collapse of universal wave function except the way of work of Einstein clock. Thus, in relativistic quantum mechanics theory, the observer is Einstein clock itself, and it is the measurement device at once. Okay, now let us continue. In the case of cosmology, there is a problem we have to resolve, namely the problem of singularity. The classical cosmology just recognizes radius singularity as the only one singularity where the Big Bang comes from. Because in the classical cosmology, time is just an axis in four dimension system x point y point c point t. But as we have seen that if time is just an axis in four dimension system, this will cause the problem of singularity. How can we develop a theory of cosmology if the essential problem in cosmology still remains as a problem. In no boundary proposal of Stephen Hawking, we see an effort to solve the problem of singularity by use of quantum mechanics. And this effort result a subtle Koch model as an alternative to replace the standard model that is the conical model. In the subtle model, singularity is not a point but a space with a certain radius. This can solve the problem of singularity, but the following problem is about symmetry, and this relates to the coordinate transformation. The bottom of 
Shuttlecock is a spherical space, but the top of Shuttlecock is the conical space. In the conical space, time is an is a scalar, and Lorentz transformation can be applied in this space. But in the spherical space, time is a vector, and Lorentz transformation cannot be applied in this space. Why? Because in the conical space, the motion of light is a strike motion. But in the spherical space, the motion of light is a circular motion. Thus, we need other color transformation to describe the motion in the spherical space. We will derive such color transformation and reveal the existence of dark matter. But for the purpose of this lecture, I just can tell you that a no boundary proposal of Stephen Hawking cannot be applied for cosmology due to the symmetry consideration. Because of the symmetry consideration, both the spherical space and conical space in Shuttlecock model must have the pair which is the complement. It will be clear if we view the space-time system consists of two space. Those are the real space or the spatial coordinate system and the real space or the time coordinate system. Thus, by symmetry consideration, we get the Dumbbell space model as a reliable model for cosmology. By view that the space-time system consists of two space, we have two singularities. Those are the time singularity and the radius singularity, which is responsible to the existence of universe. We regard singularity as the nodal plane. That is the region of space where probability of finding particle is equal to zero. This view is the entry point to see the dynamic of universe as the dynamic of probability wave. By view that the space-time system consists of two space and singularity is the nodal plane, we can resolve the problem of singularity in a very simple way. If the initial condition of the universe is a singularity, so in the past, probability density must be concentrated in the real space. Because the time factor t equals to zero, which implies that the imaginary space or the time current system is a singularity or the nodal plane. In the circle of conjugation, we describe the time singularity or the beginning singularity as the point of R sapo point zero. Due to the Big Bang, the time expands. And because time is a factor, this expansion is finite. We know that the volume of space-time system fulfills phi equals to phi sub o cos theta, where phi sub o is the volume of spherical space 4 pi r o cube over 3. Because the time factor and radius factor are conjugated to form the right angle, so if we state phi r equals to phi sub o cos theta 
as the volume of the real space, so the volume of the inner space must fulfill Vt equals to V sub O cos 1 half pi minus theta. Thus, expansion of time reaches the maximal value when theta equals to 1 half pi or equals to 90 degree. At this point, the volume of the inner space become maximal Vt equals to V sub o cos theta and the volume of the risk phase we are equals to zero. Thus, the end of expansion of time singularity is formation of radius singularity. In the circle of conjugation we describe the radius singularity or the end singularity as the point of zero point C T sub O. Thus the Big Bang is the expansion of time singularity and the overall process of Big Bang is reincarnation of singularity where the time singularity that is the beginning singularity reincarnate to be the radius singularity that is the end singularity. This, if we just regard the radius singularity as the only one singularity where the Big Bang comes from, we will face with the problem of singularity due to the equation m equals to rho times v, which imply that the initial condition of universe is a condition without mass because v equals to zero for rho is infinite. So does the universe comes from nothing? Does the Big Bang the Bang of nothing? This is a paradox in cosmology we have to resolve before we build up cosmology as a science which can explain the complete reality in the cosmos. As I have mentioned it, the only one way to overcome the problem of singularity is by view that the space-time system consists of two space. The time is just not an axis in four-dimension system x point y point c point t, but time is a space, namely the imaginary space. This implies that the space-time system itself must be split into two branches. Those are the real space-time system contains x point y point c point t coordinates and the imaginary space-time system consists, contains x, the x point t y point t c point x coordinates. This leads us to the conclusion that in the real space-time system the radius factor r equals to square root of x square plus y square plus c square is real but the time factor is imaginary. That's why in the real space-time system we cannot see that Time has a direction in three-dimension system. On the other hand, in the imaginary space-time system, the time factor t equals to square root of tx square plus ty square plus tc square is real.
but the radius factor is imaginary. So in the imagery space-time system, the radius has no direction, but the time has. But splitting of space-time system into two branches must lead to the sp splitting of consciousness into two branches to perceive reality in these two branches. We will see this thing in the case of double slit experiment. Now, let us see how the time expands. When time singularity expands, the real space must undergo contraction. Once again, when the time singularity expands, the real space must undergo contraction. So the fusion of time singularity and a radius singularity take place when theta equals to 45 degree. Why? Because the fusion of singularities take place when r equals to CT. That's because, because R equals to R sub cos theta and CT equals to CT sub cos sin theta. We find R sub cos theta equals to CT sub cos sin theta. And due to the Einstein principle of synchronization of the stationary clock, R sub o equals to CT sub O, we get cos theta equals to sin theta. Hence theta equals to 45 degree. The fusion of time singularity and radius singularity give rise to the formation of the scalar field and the vector field as we can see in the double space topology. This is the fusion of radius singularity and time singularity at the origin of double space and this fusion give rise to the formation of the scalar field and the vector field. Now let us see the consequence of the fusion of singularities. As we have seen in lecture 8 that Solution of the equation of imaginary senate position gives sin theta equals to ml over square root of L times L plus 1. And because ml equals to 0 plus minus 1, plus minus 2 until plus minus L, so we can write sine theta equals to ML over square root of ML times ML plus 1. So for theta equals to 45 degree, we get 1 over square root of 2 is equals to ML over square root of ML times ML plus 1 and we get ML equals to 1. Because LC 
equals to LT equals to ML times H bar with state space quantization or time quantization. So for ML equals to 1, we get LC equals to LT equals to H bar. which imply that the fusion of singularities give rise to the emerging of photon, which has the angular momentum L equals to S bar. The emerging of photon in the early universe due to the fusion of singularities met the Einstein clock began to work. Once again, the emerging of photon in the early universe due to the fusion of singularities met the Einstein clock began to work. As we have learned in lecture 12 that the Senate position has a correlation with the magnetic quantum number ML and the velocity of photon Vf by equation sine theta equals to ML times V over Vf. For the velocity of photon, Vf equals to C and ML equals to 1, we get sine theta equals to V over C. So cos theta equals to square root of 1 minus V square over C square. This equation can be viewed as the Senate position or time position transformation, which transform the Senate position or the time position <coughs> to the inverse of Lorentz factor. Hence, we get a correlation between the Senate position or time position with the velocity of particle. This transformation is very important to explain the reality in the space-time system in relation to the geometrical or topological aspect. The direction of time to the future gives rise to the time dilation, and the direction of time to the past gives rise to the length contraction. Thus, according to the Senate position or time position transformation cos theta equals to square root of 1 minus v square over v c square state the direction of time to the past and the inverse of cos theta equals to 1 over square root of 1 minus v square over c square state the direction of time to the future. Now, let us see how the direction of time responsible to the direction of energy in the space-time system. Equation M equals to rho time phi state the quantum mass. That is the equivalent mass of the quantum field which has the density of rho in the form of vacuum phi. According to this equation, we can state the energy of vacuum fulfilled E equals to rho times phi times c square, where rho is the density of 
vier en vier is de vorm of vakum. Because phi equals to phi sub of cos theta and rho equals to m over phi, so the quantum mass become ambiguous. The magnitude of quantum mass depends on the situation, whether rho is constant or phi is constant. If rho is constant, we find the quantum mass fulfill m equals to rho sub o times phi, or equals to rho sub o times phi sub o cos theta, or equals to m sub o cos theta. But if phi is constant, we find the quantum mass fulfill m equals to rho times phi sub o, or equals to m sub o over phi sub o cos theta times phi sub o, or equals to m sub o over cos theta. For m equals to m sub o cos theta, we find the chain of mass with respect to the chain of strength position or time position for to the m equals to minus m sub o times sine theta d theta. Thus, integral from m sub o to m dm equals to minus m sub o times integral from 0 to theta of sine theta d theta or equals to m sub o times the magnitude of cos theta from 0 to theta. Integral from m sub o to m dm state the uncertainty of mass delta m. So delta m equals to m sub o times cos theta minus 1. And according to the second position or time position transformation, we get delta m equals to m sub o times square root of 1 minus v square over v c square minus 1. Thus, in this case, we find the uncertainty of energy of vacuum fulfilled delta E equals to C squared times delta M or equals to M O C squared times square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared minus 1 or equals to minus 1 half times M O V squared for V far less than C. This is the negative kinetic energy of vacuum. On the other hand, for m equals to m sub o over cos theta, we find the chain of mass with respect to the chain of state position or time position fulfill the m equals to m sub o times sine theta over cos square theta d theta. So integral from m sub o to m dm equals to m sub o times integral from 0 to theta of sine theta over cos square theta d theta. Or equals to minus m sub o times integral from 0 to cos theta of 1 over cos square theta d cos theta or equals to m sub o times the magnitude of 1 over cos theta from 0 to theta. Hence we get delta m equals to m sub o times 1 over cos theta minus 1. And according to the same position of time position transformation, we get delta m equals to m sub o times 1 over square root of 1 minus v square over c square minus 1. As in this case, 
we find the uncertainty of energy of vacuum fulfill delta E equals to C squared times delta M or equals to M O C squared times 1 over square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared minus 1 or equals to 1 half times M O V squared. This is the positive kinetic energy of vacuum. Yes, we see that vacuum can produce the positive and negative energy because of the presence of the field in vacuum. Electron and positron are produced in vacuum as matter and antimatter. As we see that by involving time as a factor in mathematic construction of quantum mechanics, we reach the same conclusion with the Dirac relativistic quantum mechanics. But the better understanding we get from the equation the m equals to minus m sub o sin theta d theta and the m equals to m sub o times sin theta upper cos square theta d theta which imply that vacuum always produce matter and antimatter as time progress. Production of matter and antimatter in vacuum, namely pair production, follow the direction of time. Because length contraction in the space-time system gives rise to the mass dilation in the momentum mass system, and time dilation in the space-time system give rise to the momentum contraction or mass contraction in the momentum mass system. So, production of matter follow the direction of time to the past, whereas production of anti-matter follow the direction of time to the future. This can be described as follows. In this description, we see that the future is time like position. Whereas the past is the space like position. So in the pair production, the matter is produced due to the direction of time to the past. Whereas the antimatter is produced due to the direction of time to the future. So, the matter such as electron, we can call as the real matter, whereas the anti-matter such as positron we can call as the imaginary matter. In lecture 12, we have learned that 
the angular momentum of photon or boson in general as the carrier of force of particle fulfill V over Vf times MVR equals to S bar. Where Vf is the velocity of photon and V is the velocity of particle. This equation is an important equation in relativistic quantum mechanics. For Vf equals to V, we get MVR equals to S bar, which imply that when photon become a particle, this particle has to spin it. So the angular momentum of this particle is MVR equals to S bar. In the case of electron, the centripetal force maintain the position of electron in orbital against the influence of electric force of nucleus. So mv square over r is equal to e square over 4 pi epsilon o r square. So V equals to E square over 4 pi epsilon O MVR. Thus we find the orbital velocity of electron fulfilled Ve equals to E square over 4 pi epsilon O is bar equals to 2.1 x 6 times 10 to the 6 meter per second. This implies that when a photon becomes an electron, its velocity is equals to Ve, which is a constant, as well as the constant of the speed of light, C. But the orbital velocity of electron also fulfill Ve equals to E over square root of 4 pi epsilon O times M times R, equals to 2.186 times 10 to the 6 meter per second, where M is the mass of electron and R is the Bohr radius. What does it mean? This implies that there are two kinds of electron occupy the same orbital. The first kind is the fermion electron and the second one is the boson electron. The fermion electron is the electron of the Pauli's exclusion principle because its position is determined by the radius factor. On the other hand, the boson electron is the electron doesn't obey Pauli's exclusion principle because its position is not determined by the radius factor. Thus, the boson electron can propagate in space like wave because it is the wave indeed 
due to its history. On the other hand, the fermion electron cannot propagate in space because it must obey Pauli's exclusion principle. We see that the orbital velocity of boson electron is just determined by the spin of photon, which is expressed by the angular momentum of photon, its bar. Because spinning is the way of performing probability distribution, so Ve as a constant must determine probability distribution factor. In equation delta E equals to MOC square times square root of 1 minus V square of C square minus 1 or delta E equals to MOC square times 1 over square root of 1 minus V square of C square minus 1. The quantity in parenthesis that the probability distribution factor. For Phi E equals to E square over 4 pi epsilon O is bar which is a constant, so probability distribution factor must be a constant. And we can call this constant as P bar. As P bar equals to 1 over square root of 1 minus V e square over C square minus 1 or equals to 1 half times V e square over C square or equals to 2.655 times 10 to the minus 5 or P bar equals to square root of 1 minus V e square over C square minus 1 or equals to minus one half times V e square over C square or equals to minus 2.655 times 10 to the minus 5 where the positive and negative sign start the direction of time. If we start P bar equals to 1 over n bar or n bar equals to 1 over p bar equals to 2 c square over v square equals to 3.766 times 10 to the fourth step the amount of quantum state or in relation to entropy N bars state the amount of Hilbert space where probability of finding return is distributed into the same portion in this space. Because Delta E equals to MOC squared times P bar or equals to MOC squared over N bar. So we find that the uncertainty of energy is not random but deterministic 
by probability distribution factor p bar. Once again, delta E equals to MOC squared times P bar or equals to MOC squared over N bar state that the uncertainty of energy is not random but deterministic by probability distribution factor P bar. This equation states that the uncertainty of energy is a distribution of potential energy into n bar quantum state. Hence, the kinetic energy is a determinate measure of the uncertainty of energy. Because spinning is the way of performing probability distribution, so n bar state how many times electron has to spinning, so that probability of finding electron is 100%. According to relationship between energy and frequency, we find delta E equals to H times delta F or equals to H over delta T. So H over delta T equals to MOC squared times P bar. Hence, delta T equals to H over MOC squared times P bar. This implied that the uncertainty of time is not random, but deterministic by probability distribution factor P bar. According to this equation, we find the type of spinning fulfill delta T over 2 pi equals to n bar times h bar over m o c square, which means that electron has to spin in n bar time, so that probability of finding electron is 100 percent. Furthermore, we recognize its bar over MOC as the Compton radius RC. So, the time of spinning in relation to the Compton radius fulfill delta T over 2 pi equals to N bar times RC over C or C times delta T equals to N bar times 2 pi RC or equals to N bar times lambda C. This implies that the Compton radius is the boundary of conformal field which determines one quantum state of electron in lecture 13, we have seen that this boundary determines stability of nucleus. If the conformal field is the field responsible to the spinning of electrons, so the conformal field must contain n-bar quantum state. This implies that electron has to spinning and bar time, so the probability of finding electron is 
Now, C times delta T is that the uncertainty of wavelength delta lambda because delta T, the uncertainty of time is determinate, so the uncertainty of wavelength delta lambda must be determinate too. In the case of hydrogen atom, we find delta lambda equals to lambda times 1 over n o square minus 1 over n square, where n o equals to 1, 2, 3, etc., and n equals to infinity, infinity minus 1, infinity minus 2, and so on until n o plus 1. Thus we find lambda times 1 over n o square minus 1 over n square is equals to n bar times lambda c. Because the Compton wavelength lambda c for electron fulfill lambda c equals to h over m e times c, so 1 over lambda equals to 1 over n bar times lambda c times 1 over n o square minus 1 over n square. Or equals to m e times c over s times p bar times 1 over n o square minus 1 over n square. Or equals to 1.095 times 10 to the 7 matter to minus 1 times 1 over n square minus 1 over n square. And we recognize this constant as Rydberg constant r. So 1 over lambda equals to r times 1 over n square minus 1 over n square. This calculation is compatible to the spectral line of hydrogen atom and this result is a proof that the uncertainty of time or the uncertainty of energy is not random but deterministic by the probability distribution factor p bar. Furthermore, this calculation showed that the spectrum of hydrogen atom comes from the spinning of electron and this conclusion is the same to the Dirac relativistic quantum mechanics conclusion. Spinning is the way of performing probability distribution. So I cannot imagine if probability distribution which is performed by spinning or rotation of the air is random. If this occurs so today, I find that the air rotates in 20 hours. But yesterday I found that the air rotates in 50 hours. And tomorrow, I cannot predict how fast the Earth can rotate. 
maybe it will rotate in 10 hours or 100 hours or 1000 hours I don't know because tomorrow doesn't yet comes so I am living in the crazy world the crazy universe where everything about time is unpredictable. Is God crazy? So he set up reality in the universe like that? Absolutely not. The basic idea of creation is that time must be an exact value instead of the expectation value. One second, and keep in mind, the basic idea of creation is that time must be an exact value instead of the expectation value. That's why we find that time flow in the constant speed, 24 hours per day. The season comes in the constant cycle, the baby born, after nine moon growth in the mammy swarm, and so on and so forth. So you deny the normal reality if you feel that time is an expectation value as it is formulated in the uncertainty principle, delta T times delta E, greater than or equals to S over 4 pi. This formulation denies the normal reality. That's because God does not play dice with the universe. But he determined probability distribution of dice, so every side of dice has the same probability to appear. So the universe, the nature, must be governed by the laws of probability distribution instead of the uncertainty principle. I will explain what I mean about the laws of probability distribution after we derive the color transformation or the wave function for the multidimensional space-time system or the multiverse. By the wave function of multiverse, we can see the dynamics of the collapse of universal wave function. Okay. Maybe you want to ask me something about the relativistic quantum mechanic theory. This is my email address, J O D Y P A T T Y 08 at gmail.com. See you in the next video.